HA Video Systems. I recently finished the executive program at awesome. Anderson. Um, uh, a comment about the digital ads. I bought uh, the new spicy coat because I walked by a billboard. <laughs> and then in terms of the interaction with the talent, I remember back in the day, like creatives thought, oh, I can do marketing. Do they understand now that there's so much more to you mean it? production executives. You mean those who make the movies? People, the, the, the directors, yes. the talent in the movies, and then the production executives, is there an understanding of how complicated it is now? There is always, I, I always say, there has to be some friction, because out of the friction comes the light. There are always going to be filmmakers who are incredibly precious. And I don't use precious in a negative way. This is their baby. Yeah. And learning that is the number one, for any of you who want to go into entertainment marketing, forget the other marketing. When it's just entertainment, you are literally dealing with somebody's child. So imagine. I do think there is more respect for how hard it is, given how hard it is to find the under 35. So I do think that has shifted with um, the growth of digital in particular. But there will always, I mean, look, I'm a, a Monday morning quarterback too. Why did they make that choice? Why would they do that? But I do think there is more respect. Just speak up. Okay, who cares? Hi, my name is John Frederick. Um, you see a name rising for TV. I'm glad you said good at something because I'm not into marketing. I'm a film and TV. Good, be good at something. Uh, yeah. Um, so during the gaming panel, there was a discussion about immersing players into you know games and building a community. As a film and TV writer, someone who's passionate about storytelling and community, do you think there is a way to immerse the audience into the entire production process that could also be profitable and helping for marketing? Because I definitely see an avenue. I don't think. I mean, I'm a believer that you don't want people to see how sausage is made. Because the actual making of film and television is fucking awful. I, I mean, you are on set. You're dealing with six days a week, on set for 12 hours. It's cold. It's awful. I think the magic is that you don't see that. And our jobs and your job is going to be to never let the audience know the tears that you cried in creating something. <laughs> but I really believe that. And I think... Um, we like to hear about happy sets. You know, seeing Oppenheimer, seeing them all out together and friends. They, the truth is, on a, on a Nolan film, they were. I, I'm sure you've all read. They basically took scale on that movie. Yeah. There was there were no politics. There was a very clear. There's an alpha in that room, and it's Chris Nolan, and there's no discussion. And they had a very happy, productive set. When you hear of sets where people didn't get along, you just you want to see the Avengers be friends. One quick question. Don Frank and I have worked in sports and entertainment over the years, background PR and marketing. Awesome. I saw a film at Sundance last year called Radical. Best film I've seen the last couple of years. Yeah, I've heard about it. It's about a teacher in Mexico and um, an you elementary you school teacher. Yeah. yeah, an unbelievable film. It totally disappeared. It was bought, the big rage at Sun <laughs> Sundance. Yeah, bought it? I'm trying to remember. Was it if this, it, I don't think it was. No, somebody like IFC, and it totally disappeared. The film, like one week, um, it was out. I, I saw nothing on, you know, even on the streaming platform. It's such an easy film to market. I'm just amazed. It was like you said, just dumping a film. I don't know why. No, no money was put behind this film. To me, that's the saddest things. Thing well, when these films are mishandled. It. Was it IFC? Did somebody? I'll have to Google that. Somebody can Google while we're here, but um, um, radical. It, it was happens, a Mexican film. It last happens year. all the time. Oh. It's why there are winners and there are losers, oh. and it's why distribution matters. It's why media matters. But and you know, Ted will. Ted created something that, on some level, the greatest democratizing of content ever in our lifetimes and maybe ever in the world is Netflix. That every single piece of content has an equal chance of being served to their 260 million subscribers, which really is about a billion people. And that is why, you know, we talk a lot at our company about the act, I know we have to go, about theatrical versus, well, who are distributors going to be? 
And I am a real Netflix loyalist because even if it isn't as, you don't have a theatrical campaign, all the things, you have access to almost one out of every seven billion, I mean, it, it's one out of every seven people on earth. So if Radical had been on Netflix, even if they hadn't marketed it, people would have found it. All right, thank you guys so much. Let's give a big round of applause for that.